And welcome back everyone, welcome back to Blackwell Epiphany. The story is really picking up now as we got a new location, relating Tanya Corsi to this newsroom. And I think Jimbo is not really being very honest with us. Hi, Mr. Peebles. Hello, Rosangela, was it? What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Can you think of any other Jays who might have written that letter? I can think of six who work in this office alone. I'm sure there are dozens more. Hmm. I'm gonna talk to you about everything. Can you tell me anything? Like I said, we all miss her. There's nothing else to say. Hmm. Can you tell me? Me? It's not a... Yeah, what you, what you see a... is what you get. I'm not asking if... Does this number... Sorry, no. No. I well, wonder... Thanks for your... I'm gonna check this with everyone, but... I'm just gonna... Hmm. I wonder if Jim... Uh, old Jimbo guy here was a client of Ray's. Oh, actually, before I do that... Do you... Hi. Can Hello. I talk to him what about a Ray? Ray. Do you know a madam who calls herself Ray? That's not really the kind of thing our show reports on, so I can't really help you. Sorry. He kind of hesitated there, which makes me think he kind of was a client. Well, thanks. Sure thing. Sure thing. Let's see. Were you... Dealing with special ladies? A James Peebles is listed as being a client of Ray's, and the girl he saw was Heather Gopstein. Well, this just got juicy. Busted. So, uh, Jimbo, you had a little fun there with Heather? Hi, Miss- Hello, Rosangela, was it? What can I do for you? Well, I know everything. Jim, I know everything. Sorry? I know who Heather is and what she did for a living. I also know that you procured her services. There was a note in Tanya's apartment that said, I know about Heather. It was signed, J. That could have been anybody. Do you really expect me to believe that now? <sighs> no, I don't. Busted, mister. Tell me about your involvement with Heather. God, it was over 25 years ago. Whoa. Working the late shift, sleeping during the day. Who has time for a social life? So, yes, I found other ways to meet my needs. Heather was one of them. I'm not proud of it, but I make no excuses for it either. You said it was 25 years ago, so you stopped seeing her. She quit the business. I didn't know what happened to her until she walked in that door. The new face of good morning. Tanya Kors. What? Tanya? Yeah, the name was different. The hair was different. The whole attitude was different. But I knew. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Uh, what? So Heather and Tanya are the same person, but they're two different ghosts. Uh. Heather and Tanya are one and the same? You didn't know? Isn't that what all this is about? She reinvented herself. Changed her looks. Got a gig as a weather girl. Worked her way up to this newsroom. Worked here for years and never knew who I was. Until I told her. Until you blackmailed her, you mean? Look. 30 years I've been here, and I haven't moved from this damn desk. I saw an opportunity, and I took it. So, I wrote her that note. I threatened to expose her past. I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't expect her to go home and... for that to happen. They said she fell in the shower because she was drunk, but she was only drunk because of me. So what now? I... I, I don't really know what to say. So what about the, the ghost in the courtyard? Isn't she Heather as well? I'm confused. It's completely up to you. I'm not going to do anything. You're not. I got what I came here for. Very profound, Red. Very profound. Ever think of getting into fortune cookies? I'm only thinking of getting my copy refilled. That's my girl, always planning ahead. Always. Oh, so the newsroom is gone now. Should we go talk to Tanya about her past? What about the other ghost? So what exactly happened? Tanya, Heather, whoever, she split? She killed off her past so thoroughly that it became its own ghost? I suppose so. I didn't know ghosts could do that. What? You read the rule book? Because I sure haven't. If we got a split spook on our hands, we gotta put them back together. Interesting. So that's what happened.
So Heather, the, the ghost in the courtyard, is, doesn't really remember anything about Grace Church or Father Michael because it's the Tanya of the past. She basically split herself in two. But it's the same person. Wow, that's, that's a lot of switcheroony. I've never seen ghosts do that. So I think we should bring Tanya to see her former self. I know about you, Tanya. I know about Heather now. Hi there. Hello again, mister. What brings you by? I know who, who you are. Listen, Tanya, I know who you are. We've already covered this, haven't we? No, I mean who you really are. You're Heather Goffstein. Or at least you were. I told you, I don't know any Heather. Tanya. I don't know any Heather because Heather is gone. Heather is dead. She doesn't exist anymore. She can't. I'm sorry, Tanya, but she does. What do you want? Money? A promotion? Like Jim? No, I just want you to come with me. There's someone you need to meet. I don't have a choice, do I? Not Fine. really. Lead on. But remember this. Peter didn't just teach me how to do Pilates. Take me anywhere funny, and you'll be looking at a broken nose. I wouldn't dream of it. I think we're gonna be safe. Follow me. Why are we going out there? Just trust me. Trust you? That's rich. You. I saw you on the roof earlier. Are you in league with this man? Um, kind of? Two blackmailers instead of one. This is just great. It's time to confront your past, Tanya. Slash Heather. Where the hell are you taking me? Just follow us, okay? Can I at least call my car service? I don't think that's possible. What do you mean? She means that they'd never come in this weather. It's better to walk. Come on. Come on. That makes more sense. Yes. Oh dear. This is this this is going to be interesting. Where are we going? It's just up this way. Wait. I know this building. There you go. I used to live here back when I was a prostitute. Why did you bring me here? Whatever you brought me here for, get on with it. Joey it's showtime. Tanya, there's someone you need to meet. There's nobody here I want to see, I assure you. Even still, I just need you to follow me. Then we can forget about this whole thing. <sighs> Fine. Surprise! Hey, Heather? Hey, who's your friend? What is this? Who are you? Answer me! Heather Goffstein? Who are you? No. No, 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 no. This is insane. I'm going insane. Um, sorry? You shouldn't be here. You shouldn't exist. What's your problem? My problem? My problem is that I hate you. Hate me? You don't even know me. I destroyed you. I got rid of your name. I got rid of your hair. I would've gotten rid of your face if I could've afforded it. You can't get rid of me that easily. No kidding! For 20 years I was free of you, and now you come breezing back. Breezing back? From where? First Jim wanted a promotion, and now this idiot here wants... I don't know what! Huh. Hey, leave me out of this. But we don't want anything. We just want you to be a whole soul again. I don't want anything. That's bull! Ta ha! Huh? You be quiet! Hey! No, you be quiet! Stop, Stop that. that! Look at each other. You're the same person, give or take 20 years. I don't understand. I don't think I want to. Tanya, what happened when you got Jim's note? What note? It's too late to deny it. Nothing happened. I just wanted to forget. Forget what? Forget you! Forget this whole life I left behind! Why? Why are you so ashamed of me? All this, this life, it's a part of who you were, who you become. 
Will I ever be free of you? Do you really want to be? I'm not a bad person. I'm just kind of lost. I know I'll find my way eventually. Isn't that the important thing? Well, isn't it? Look at you. I really was beautiful once. You're really beautiful now. Damn straight. Wow. You okay? Okay? I haven't felt this good in years. It's like an espresso and a colonic all at once. Ugh. Speaking of which, you can take a blackmail threat and shut it. And I'm gonna tell Jim the same thing. Maybe it'll end my career, or maybe it'll give me a book deal. Either way, I'm tired of hiding. Tanya, listen. No, I'm not Tanya anymore. Tanya died. She... She what? She... I... We... She really died. Like, literally, you're dead. Took three Valium with a vodka chaser. That's all I remember. You're not really a blackmailer, are you? No, I'm not. I'm... I'm dead? I'm sorry. I... Ugh. If I'm dead, why do I feel sick to my stomach? Listen, there's no time to explain. Just grab a hold of this. What? Just do it. That was... interesting. Did it work? Only one way to find out. It worked. That's great. This is all just so... unbelievable. You're taking it much better than I did. Can't you feel it? Like something is trying to pull you apart. I've been pushed and pulled too often this evening for me to notice. Madeline, have you had time to examine them? I think... yes. Madeline? Yes, apologies. I believe I have all the information I need. Well, tell us! Whoa, huh? what, what the fuck? Ugh, I really don't feel so good. This can't be right. Michael? No. What's going on? No. Madeline. No, no. Jesus. Oh, my host. <laughs> I... Madeline, what just happened? That felt quite pleasant. Madeline? Madeline? Hey. You, Malone, stay back. You as well, Blackwell. I have absorbed enough energy to burn that precious body of yours to a cinder. Why? Why do this? Have you ever heard of the concept, the journey of the soul? What? It is said that every soul has a predestined fate or destiny, and the goal of every soul is to find it. But it is also said that the joy comes from the journey, not the destination. Have you ever wondered where you would be now without the grace group? without the epiphanies that were pushed into your brains as if by magic. Maybe you would have all found your way, maybe not. But you skipped the journey, went right to the destination. It made your souls happy for certain, but it also made them weak, pliable, controllable, by someone like me. And now, if you'll excuse me, I am still very hungry. No! <gasps> Ow! <laughs> What the hell just happened? Madeline was evil all this time? Oh my god, I think I got goosebumps. It was you. Even when you were with Jocelyn? You. This whole time it was you? Indirectly. I knew these souls existed, I just needed to collect them. I could not collect my host until the last, because my existence here was tied to him. As for Fielding and Gothstein, they were sleeping spirits. They needed to be awakened. Something only you could do. So, thank you for that. But... But why? What the hell are you doing this for? I pulled you out of the dark! You were free! Why mess that up? Free. You, of all souls, tell me that I'm free. I am dead. For centuries, I have been dead. I was a good spirit guide. I did my duty. And yet, did I ever move on? Did I receive any reward? No. 
I was passed on from host to host, saving spirit after spirit. It became tiresome. Then my last host banished me. I remained there, in the void, alone, forgotten by the universe, until you brought me out. Yeah, well, we all make mistakes. But I was still not free. To fully free myself, I needed power, energy, these souls, these poor misguided souls, were the nearest source I could find. But what, what, what are you intending to do with this energy? And what do you need energy for? What on earth could be worth all this? Allow me to demonstrate. Hey! Whoa! What the hell are you doing? Ah! Red, you okay? Come on, darling, say something. Interesting. I wondered if I would have to relearn how to breathe or walk, but it all comes quite naturally, like putting on a tailored glove. No, Madeline possessed Rosa. This can't be- wow. This is the, like the biggest plot twist of plot twists. This isn't happening. You have spent the last three nights ensuring that it did, denying it won't solve anything. No, it won't. But since I can't punch you, it's all I got. Malone, there is no need for this hostility. No need? You lied to us from day one! I apologize for the ruse. I admit I have not been completely forthcoming. No kidding. Come now, Malone. Nothing has changed. I won't shirk the duty. I have no choice. We will continue to save lost souls. Performing it from this end could be refreshing. Like hell refreshing, I work only with Red. I work with Red, not with you. You can think of me as her, if it will help. Like hell it'll help. Like hell. Sadly, you have no choice. Hmm. I'm gonna fix this. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What do you mean? Red, fight her. Whatever she's doing, fight her. She cannot. If her predecessors could not win against me, then she has no hope. Not with the power I now possess. Predecessors? What are you talking about? This is not the first time I have attempted this. In the void, I could only reach certain minds. The minds of other bestowers. Her aunt! Other bestowers? You mean... The other Blackwell women, yes. But I was too weak, and so were they. I could only control their minds for a few minutes before they... broke. Broke? I did not expect that would happen, but some good did come of it. I eventually learned the proper approach, and finally I have succeeded. You're insane. I mean it, Madeline, a stark, raving lunatic. Do you have any idea what you've done? You dare condemn me, little ghost? Allow a few centuries to pass. Wait until you've been left abandoned in the dark. Adrift. Terrified. Then you can pass judgment. But until then, I must get to the business of living. Stay here. We're not done talking. I said stay here! Ah! Hey! Now cut that out! Do try and keep up. We have no choice. God damn it. Holy shit. Wow. What is she doing? I'm getting her back. One way or another. So she was trying to reach out to the other bestowers. Does that mean she tried to reach to our aunt, Aunt Lauren? And she basically broke Aunt Lauren's mind. That's why she went insane. She was trying to fight off Madeline without realizing it, and it drove her to insanity. Hey, Maddie. Yes, Malone. Now what? Yeah. You killed Lauren and Patricia. Their deaths and their insanity is due to you. You killed Lauren and Patricia. I did not. I admit, 
Their mind's rejection of me had unintentional consequences. But there was no malice intended. Well, that's just Jake, as long as there was no malice. You did kill George. Holy shit, you broke his neck. Maybe you didn't mean to kill Lauren and Patricia, but you did kill George Austin. As a spirit, I hardly think so. Bull, you're the only one with any motive. I don't know how, but it was you. Poor Cooper. A weakened soul is such a sad thing. And his mind was so easily controlled. Why in such a state he could be told to do anything, anything at all. And he would do it, with no memory of it. Well, perhaps some residual guilt remained. He has gotten quite agitated since it happened. Fortunately, that is no longer relevant. Jesus, I would have never thought Madeline to be the bad guy in this game. Now what? I will simply live. I will grow old and I will die, like any other soul. Will you though? And when that happens, perhaps I will move on as intended. It is a slim hope. But after centuries of existence, it is the best I have. What about Red Soul? Isn't she still in there? Why are you pacing around? No reason. I am just enjoying the sensation. It has been a long time since I have felt snow on my face. That's not your face. True, I suppose. But no matter. I am still enjoying it. You can't go any further, can you? Whatever do you mean? You're stuck. You're tied to Michael. Trying to escape it is like hitting a brick wall. She it is. It is a temporary setback, nothing more. What are you gonna do, lug Michael's body around in a wheelbarrow? I'd like to see that. Don't be absurd. You know as well as I do. I am bound to his corporeal form for a few days. After that, I will be free. And we're gonna stop you before that happens. Ha! <laughs> Some master plan. All this planning. All this death. And you can't even cross the street. Only for a day or two. I can wait. I have infinite patience. Yeah, but does your stomach? You're gonna get hungry. Any problem has a solution. What about going to the bathroom? Red drank a lot of coffee. Perhaps burning Michael's body to ashes. Or some kind of cleansing ritual. Here's an idea. Take a powder. Just leave us the hell alone. Will you let me think? No. Oh, I can't wait for the police to see what you did. Although they're gonna... They're definitely gonna accuse Red of it. I'm gonna fix this. You honestly believe that? This might seem strange to you, but yeah. I've always known I was here for a reason. And maybe this is it. To fix what spooks like you screw up. That is... amusing. Amusing? Yes. You honestly don't know. No. No, of course you don't. Know what? Of course I don't know what. You think you are so special? You think you were... what? Chosen? You were nothing important, Malone. You were merely the last. The last what? The last spirit we saved. Before I was banished. I could not continue the duty, so it was passed on to you. I don't believe... Yeah, that's what I thought. That he was the last soul he s they saved, so... When Madeline got stuck in the void, Joey was brought up to the role of guide. What the hell do you mean? I was the last spirit you saved. Honestly, did you think you were different from any other lost soul? The confusion, the fear they all felt, that you felt. It is no wonder you have forgotten. Doesn't matter. That was then. This is now. And right now, I plan on fixing this. But the point is, why was Madeline chosen to be a guide? Was it the same situation that someone banished the previous spirit guide and Madeline was the last one they saved? Interesting. I can't wait for the cops to show up. A dead priest at you just around the corner? Bet you never expected to come back to life only to spend it in jail. Will you be quiet? Honestly, why you haven't driven your host completely mad is beyond me. I hate you, Madeline. We can't go anywhere, right? Unless she leaves with me, I'm stuck here. And she's also stuck here. Oh dear. I think I know what we have to do. This is not going to be pretty. Can we use a totem, actually? That won't do any good. According to Maddie, this only works on aware spooks. 
pretty solid, but... Oh dear, we have to strangle Rosa. Ugh. What? What are you doing? You know, Red and I have a bond. We gotta stick together. Where she goes, I go. You might be wearing Red's body, but you ain't her. There's a line in the snow, and you can't cross it. But Rosa Blackwell, she can cross it just fine. You're... you're hurting me! Good. It worked. You idiot! Do you have any idea what you just did? I just evicted you, sister. No. No, I will not be trapped in that limbo. Oh, again. yes, you will. Tough. You made this mess. Now clean it up. Very well. Just remember, you brought this on yourself. Uh. Red? Red, talk to me. Joey? I... You okay? I... Uh. Careful. I feel... You! Great. Like a bad penny. Dispatch reported a woman ranting to herself in front of a church. I had a feeling it would be you. Care to explain the dead body around the corner? Corey? That's Officer Palmer. Now, explain. No. Miss Blackwell, I've been patient and cooperative so far. No. Stay where you are. Whoa. What are you doing? Was it like this for them? For who? Red? I think... I think it's happening. Oh no. Huh? Auntie, my grandmother, it's happening. It's like... it's like it's... No, it's too much. Red, stop that. Come on, you're gonna hurt yourself. Jesus, cut it out! Not again, not you, not now. Help somebody! Anybody! Oh my I god. Madeline, stop doing this to Rosa! Gotta... No! No! Huh? Joey? Joey? I... God, I'm tired. We could sure use some coffee right now. So we're in the void as Rosa. Wow. Can we still switch to Joey? <sighs> it's like they're reading from a playbook. Constrained, oh. drugged, placed under observation. In a week, they'll move you to another ward. Then they'll poke you full of needles and nod thoughtfully while taking notes. Then they'll move you to a long-term care floor. Keep you drugged, fed, washed. And then, I'll watch you turn gray. I'll watch your skin weather and dry. And then, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. It's all my fault. I can't blame the universe, or death, or even you. This one's on me. Maybe I deserve it, but you certainly don't. There's got to be a way to fix this. There has to be. There must be a way to fix it. Jesus. Rosa, what are we gonna do? You're stuck here. You need to find a way out. I'm not sure what that is, but it really hurts my eyes. Oh, she's wearing the, the loony bin uh, costume. I don't think I could reach it. And now she's wearing a, a, a suit. Interesting. Can we exit this place? It's our aunt! Lauren, why are you stuck in this place? The last time I saw Auntie alive, she was wasting away in a hospital bed, gray and gaunt. But now, she looks young. Younger than me, even. She looks about the age of... Well, when she was working with Joey. It's nice to see that the universe provides cigarettes. Hello? Auntie? Is that you? Oh, hey. I saved you a seat. Hi. You're very casual. Where are we? You ask too many questions. You always did. Sit down, kiddo. We've got nothing but time. Cigarette? No thanks. Hmm. If there was ever a time to smoke, it would be 
right now. Auntie? Yeah, kiddo? Oh dear. Is this where you've been all this time? Is this where you've been all this time? Don't know. Don't much care. The view is nice. I don't have Joey nagging me. Yeah, why isn't our grandmother here? Auntie, is my grandmother here? She was, but she faded away. I guess it will happen to me soon. And you. No. But in the meantime, let's enjoy the view. No, we have to stop this. Auntie, you don't seem yourself. Huh. <laughs> you don't know me at all, kiddo. In this place, I feel more like myself than anywhere I've ever been. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? About Joey? About my family? All of it? You were five years old. You could barely understand how to tie your shoes. And I thought we had more time. But hey, you're here now. And we've got all the time in the world. Indeed we do. You look great, Auntie. You look so... young. Well, I take care of myself. No, that's not what I mean. When I last saw you, you were over 50, at least. So I kept on living, huh? You were alive, if that's what you mean. Hmm, hospital bed. Like Mom. Yeah. Well, I guess it was my turn. And now, I guess it's yours. Not if we can do anything about it. What happened to me? To us? Don't know. Last I remember, my head hurt really bad. I tried to make it stop, but it just got worse. I might have thrown something? You did. I was there. Did I scream? Yes. I, I didn't hurt you, did I? I hid in the closet. Ah, good. Smart. Yeah. So all this time, for three generations, for three generations of Blackwell dames, it was Madeline all along trying to possess us and trying to enter the world again. Jesus. We were possessed by the spirit called Madeline. She didn't succeed, but we ended up here, somehow. Oh. That's all you can say? Oh? Does it really matter anymore? I guess not. It does, because, well, Rosa is, is still kind of alive. I've missed you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. That's our aunt for us. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? About Joey? About my family? All of it? You were five years old. You could barely understand how to tie your shoes. And I thought we had more time. But, hey. I guess there's nothing left to do, but... See what Joey can do to help Rosa. Huh. Sure is a nice view, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just enjoy it for a while. Yeah, that's probably best. We can still move around. Can we go I... here? Funny. What? I thought I might get up. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. Hmm. Something wrong? No. I had an idea, but it doesn't seem important. I know the feeling. Just kick back. Enjoy the light show. I guess nothing is important anymore. But our aunt never passed on, it seemed. Well, Joey... In the next episode, guys, we're gonna fix this. I swear. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, which will probably probably be the final one. I've been the Zen Bear, and this is one of the best games I've ever played.